maybe we'll just start with uh, your impressions from game one last night, Mike Rice. Well, you know, uh, you always look at both teams' strengths when you're looking at games and how they came out and why you lost and why you won. And did you play to your strengths? Did the other team take away your strengths? You look at which team was successful in doing what they, what carrying out their game plan. And, you know, the Blazers, to be successful, they have to shoot threes and they have to get LaMarcus Aldridge scoring inside. Yeah. Well, LaMarcus, when it mattered most in the first half, uh, they did a good job on him. Uh, he just never had any rhythm. It was almost like the game that he had two fouls early in the game and never got quite into game three against the Rockets. Uh, you look at the three-pointers, the Blazers were four for 16. And, you know, I cringed when the announcer says, when Will Barton hit one <laughs> middle of the third quarter that said, uh, Boy, that's the Blazers' first three-pointer. Uh, they're not doing real well in that category. He, you know, and, and you, the national guys aren't, aren't familiar with how the Blazers have won games all year long. They take as many three-pointers as anybody in the NBA. Their shooting percentage was in top ten for three-pointers in the NBA. So, uh, you know, they took away the Blazers' three-pointers, which was a, a strength of the Blazers. The second thing we mentioned about Aldridge, he finally did get, and that's why I think Wesley Matthews mentioned, we won the second half because yep. Aldridge got going in the second half, ended up with over 30 points. But the thing that we worried about most was how their bench, we knew their bench averaged 45 points a game and they would outscore the Blazer bench that averaged 25 points a game during the regular season. But if you look at two guys that are important, they're perimeter guys, and when their offense is working, the guys they bring in off the bench are making threes, and that would be Bellinelli and Patty Mills. And if you look at what they shot in the game, they were 10 for 14. That's 10 field goals for 14, and, and half of them were three-pointers. So we didn't do a good job because Tony Parker, and we mentioned it on the show that you and I did uh, with Orlando the other at night, that in order, Tony Parker was the key to everything. His penetration, his controlling the game. They have an offense almost like Phoenix had under D'Antoni where you had to shoot the ball within eight <laughs> seconds by well they have a rule it's the five tenths rule you can when you get the ball you can't hold it more than five tenths now they do that but but they make sure the ball moves people move and they were doing that they came out of they wanted to set a, a precedent that the Blazers you've played us here at our court and beat us the last three years so we've got to step up our game to show you that we are still the defending Western champs. And, mm -hmm. and they did that. They came out. Their bench did a great job. Their defense, if you look at Blazers' 20 turnovers, you can't beat San Antonio with 20 turnovers. Mm -hmm. No matter what else happens, you can't win because they convert turnovers into baskets. Yep. There are a lot of teams... Miami's another one that doesn't fast break, but if you turn it over against them, man, they shove it right <laughs> down your throat and they score. And when the playoffs start, teams like Miami, San Antonio, they understand the importance of game one. They understand they have to set the tone for the whole series in game one. The Blazers, I mean, they haven't been there. Mm -hmm. This is the second round, first time everyone knows in 13 years, 14 years. And San Antonio set the tone last night. Can the Trailblazers overcome that, though? I know there's a lot of fans that are kind of, nobody's really hitting the panic button yet because we've seen the Trailblazers be able to bounce back multiple times before. Do you think that they have the ability after coming out and having, really just getting whooped? I mean, <laughs> that's what happened last night. Do they, do they have the ability to turn it around in game two? They're nervous right now. Mm -hmm. There's no doubt that when you shoot 37% and the other team shoots 50 and that's not unusual. Uh, 25 times during the regular season, they shot over 50%. So 
the Blazers, they'll listen real good. They're going to have to come up with something that slows up Tony Parker. If Terry Stotts can go into the room at the shoot around, and it's probably going on right now, and he can show that this is how we can change everything. All he has to do is show him a tape of the regular season where the Blazers did well against this team. But he's got to convince them that, and I don't know if keeping Lillard to start the game on Parker is the answer. Uh, eventually, they put Wes on him. They put Nick on him. I think the Blazers, in order to slow up at the start of the game, they may have to use that strategy, use Wes on him right from the start and put Lillard on green over in the corner. We mentioned that the other night on yeah. our show. Yeah. And uh, we said eventually there'll be different people checking him. But Parker had one of those games that, you know, when he scores 30 and gets 11 assists, I mean, their team is right up here then. Yeah. And no one else had, Ginobili didn't do nope. anything in that game. But, you know, when, once he sets the tone, then that lets a guy like Patty Mills that's coming up to replace him, hey, if he can do it, I'm the same you. kind of player. I can do it coming <laughs> off those picks, and he did. So the Blazers have to get more aggressive with their defense, and that's difficult because mm -hmm. they're number 30 in the NBA at creating turnovers. <laughs> yep. I mean, they just don't go out and do that. Mm -hmm. And for them to change, you know, we're, we're looking at how the Blazers can turn around this series. Well, they have to do it by controlling Parker. And to control them, they've got to make some changes that allows maybe Duncan to score more. Because you look at what San Antonio is doing against the Blazers. They're taking away the three-point shot. Mm -hmm. That means Aldridge should have no trouble scoring against Splitter, which he did in the first half. He did, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, Aldridge has to score early, and it has to open it up for other people. The Blazers... Their defense is, uh, the Spurs, is good, but it's not great. And mm -hmm. so the Blazers, they'll score in this series. There's no doubt about it. But they've got to score in game two early. Mm -hmm. And that, uh, you know, we're nervous. The Blazers are just as nervous because that was a pounding. Yeah. That was a beatdown. <laughs> and they've got to get over that. It's like Oklahoma City tonight. They got beat down. Yep. And it was because... Chris Paul had eight threes, and he doesn't have eight threes, but all of a sudden he's got eight threes, so they can't panic. They have to go in and say, hey, we've got the personnel to beat the Clippers. The Clippers, you know, during the regular season didn't have the record we had, so I think they will. Mm -hmm. I think OKC will bounce back and win this game tonight. I think the Blazers have to do the same thing. Mm -hmm. They have to come in and you know, show their fans, show themselves that they can beat this Spurs team because they're going to have to win a game in San Antonio. Absolutely. So it might as well be game two. And I have a feeling they're going to bounce back as bad as it was. And maybe that's a good thing that, you know, that it'll, and the Spurs don't get overconfident a nope. whole lot, but nope. they had to be overconfident mm -hmm. coming into game two after that. <laughs> well, and they, they talked about, Tony Parker even talked about, he's like, we know this Blazers team. We're, we're not about to get complacent about it. And, and as you saw in the second half, I mean, they were able, much better, much more even second half, even though it still wasn't pretty, but they weren't definitely outscored as much as they were in the first half. I like uh, what you were saying here about Tony Parker. There's a lot of questions from fans come in this direction about Tony Parker. Here's, I'll, I'm going to put two of them together and sure. you can take them at the same time. This one comes from Tate and he says, how do you shut down Tony Parker? He was absolutely thrashing the Blazers with the pick and roll. And then Michael Wayne also says, how do you handle uh, Tony Parker's screens in game two? Do you go under? Do you switch? Do you keep trying to get over them? I mean, there's just so many offensive ways that Tony Parker can attack you. How do you shut some of those down or at least try to contain some of them? You know, if Earl Watson was five years younger, mm -hmm. I would really mention his name <laughs> because <laughs> Earl Watson knows how to get over picks. And Tony Parker at one time, the first five years in the NBA, he was a lot like Lillard. He had real trouble going over picks. And he used to try to cheat and go under them all the time. And the real good shooters would hurt him. Uh, if I'm playing Tony Parker, number one, with the Blazer, if the Blazers aren't going to change the way they 
play the pick and roll with their big guys and backing them up. I would go under all the time. Uh, I would, I'd much rather have Parker shooting outside than penetrating and getting the floater in there. Because We mentioned on the air the other night, three years ago, he was number one in the NBA in points in the paint. I mean... <laughs> That's crazy. It is. It's a crazy stat. And he was in top five, four of the five years... Uh, when he was points in the paint guy. Now he's about 10th. He still gets them. Uh, so I would go under if they're not going to change the way the big guy. I would bring my big guy out to really show. Maybe I wouldn't jump it because the Blazers just, you can't change overnight yeah. how you play the pick and roll. You can't all of a sudden tell your big guys, jump the pick and roll. But I would show and face Parker. I'd at least let him see that you're not going to get in the lane this easy. As soon as I'm going to be out here, and then what Parker does so well, he dribbles, and then if he sees your big guy is showing, then he starts dribbling around. Mm -hmm. And now your big guy doesn't know, should I stay with him, or should I wait for Lillard to catch up? And, and so these are things that the Blazers haven't done a lot of, but they're going to have to make decisions to change things with Parker because... He's just too good. Yep. Yeah, he's just, uh, we can't, now, if it's here at the Moda Center, I would say make no changes. Mm -hmm. Play it just the way you're going to play it. Between the crowd and your adrenaline, you're going to beat San Antonio here at the Moda Center. Mm -hmm. Because it's at the American Airlines in San Antonio, you got to make changes for game two. You have to show them that you're not going to control the game, Parker, like you did in game one. So mm -hmm. now they could start Wesley Matthews on him right from the get-go, and, and Wesley gets over picks better, but he still was having trouble. And what yep. eventually happened to Wes? He fouled out. He fouled he out. He fouled out with his hands behind his back. He was <laughs> behind his back and then put his hands up like this and still got called for that foul. And, and, that's <laughs> what, and you're going to lose your best defender if you put him on Parker early with foul trouble. Yep. Two fouls, he goes to the bench. Now, we talked about it, and we kind of kidded about it on that last show, Will Barton. Now, <laughs> he had Will, nine points yesterday. <laughs> because what they do... They get in the passing lanes when they get aggressive, and they make you become dribble penetrators. They don't want you running your offense, and the Blazers average 25 assists a game. They don't want the Blazers to have assists. So they get out in the passing lanes, and they make you dribble drive. Now, a guy like Westbrook, he'd, tear, he'd give him a new you-know-what. Yep. <laughs> I mean, he'd be right by him. Chris Paul, uh, Lillard's got to get used to that because now he's going to the rim a lot more, but, you know, that's not his complete game. So what they're trying to do is make it – how many assists do the Blazers have? Oh, I don't even know. Let's look. Nine. Nine. Ooh. Nine. <gasps> Whoa. Yeah. Okay, apparently I missed that last night. <laughs> Absolutely. And a lot of people did, but Popovich didn't when he made the game plan. If we can keep the Blazers under 15 assists, Nine is, you know, that's a season low. That's horrible. But, you know, you don't even, they average 24, 25. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's his game plan. Don't blame the Blazers for not passing the ball. They're still unselfish. They make you into selfish. They make you mm -hmm. dribble more. Watch Nick, watch West. They're dribbling more than they ever do because that's the game plan. What are we going to take away from the Blazers? Because the Blazers aren't great dribble penetrators. Wes kind of kicks it around. He's getting better mm -hmm. at it, mm -hmm. but he's still – Wes uh, – Nick is the same way. He's getting better at it. He, they'll be better next year, but we need to be better tomorrow. But if that's the game plan and that's what they were able to do and limit us to nine assists – what adjustments can Terry Stotts make to be able to help them get over that? LaMarcus Aldridge. Okay. See, he's got to be, because Splitter early in the game played him so well, our mm -hmm. offense was non-existent. Yeah. And we just were kind of running around trying to figure out, you know, what are they doing? What are we doing? Well, their offense was working because the Blazers don't go out and make you change your offense. Mm -mm. They make you take tough sh mid-range shots and with a guy like Parker there is no tough mid-range nope. shots he makes them. yeah he <laughs> makes them so 
you're trying to take away their strength and you haven't done it. You can't get out and force turnovers because you haven't forced turnovers all year. Yeah. So it makes it sound like, how can we beat this team then? Well, you've got to have Aldridge start, get hot early like he did against the Rockets. Yep. The reason we won the Rockets series was Aldridge scored in game two. Mm -hmm. He had 43 points. It broke down everything they wanted to do. Houston didn't panic. They said, we're going to play him the same way. We're not going to change anything we did against L.A. We know he can't get 46. Well, he got 43. <laughs> Blazers won the series right there. So the Blazers can win this series tomorrow night by Aldridge starting off hot, Lillard then getting into the picture by scoring. We need those two to score in the first half of game two and then everyone else will fall in line. Their defense won't be as effective, because I'll tell you, you look at individually, that's the trouble with playing the Spurs. They have guys that you, man, if I play him one-on-one, -on -one, I'll kill him. But you're not playing one-on-one -on -one with the Spurs, you're playing against five guys. They mm -hmm. pack the weak side in, they don't foul, You'll see a million times the Blazers will go up for a rebound, get it, put it back up, and you go, oh, it's got to be a foul. Somehow nope. it never is. Yeah. They, they commit the least amount of fouls in the NBA. We said it the other night. You're not going to beat them from the foul line because they don't foul, and they're not going to beat you from the foul line. I mean, they just are a team that shoots either perimeter shots or mid-range shots. They don't attack the rim that much. They don't get to the foul line that much. So the Blazers' defense is set up to stop what? Penetration to the, foul, to the rim. Mm -hmm. They protect the rim. This team doesn't go to the rim. Unless you're Tony Parker. <laughs> yeah, and, and even he doesn't go to the rim. He shoots floaters, mid-range floaters more than now. He used to get to the rim a lot more and, mm -hmm. and work his way in, but he doesn't do that now. So what we want to do is stop mid-range shots. Our defense is set up to give you mid-range <laughs> shots. So we have to change. There is no doubt we have to change our thinking. If we do, we can be successful against this team, but it'll be interesting. I'll watch very closely what they do in the first eight minutes and see if the changes, and they're going to make changes. Stott's mm -hmm. a good coach. Yeah. He'll make changes, but will they work against... This team is really confident now, the Spurs. <laughs> they, played, they beat Dallas in Game 7 and the Blazers Game 1. They're playing like they did last year when yes. they made the finals. Remember, they were one pass away... Four seconds. Four seconds. Four seconds away from, a from ring. winning the NBA championship. <laughs> yeah. So when Lillard said in the and Lillard, if you want to get a good interview, you interview Lillard because he tells it like it is. Oh yeah. You know, and Wes does. Yep. You know, there's no beating around the bush. Lillard said, Hey, they're a championship team. Mm -hmm. If we're gonna beat them, we've got to rise to that level. We and we can do it, but we, you know, it can't be like we're playing Milwaukee. And we can win just by shooting threes. We've got to rise and take away things that they like to do. Remember, they shot 50% in this game. Yeah. If they shoot 50% on their home court, they're going to beat you. Yep, every time. Every time. So that's, <laughs> those are changes we have to make. It's likely if they shoot 50% here in the Moda Center, they're going to beat us too. So you, right. get, you just yeah. don't want that 50% number they're to be having. They're, they're the best road team in the NBA. <laughs> they're very, very good. Uh, let's take this question from Marlene. She says, uh, are you concerned about the discrepancy, discrepancy in bench points? This, of course, leading to the depth of the San Antonio Spurs. Who is Aaron Baines? <laughs> yeah, yeah, an Australian that plays hard. Mm -hmm. He wouldn't be on their team if and using him if he didn't play hard. Uh, remember, he was the guy that kind of bumped uh, Lamarcus Aldridge when Lamarcus Aldridge went down with his injury. Mm -hmm. uh, it was Baines that was in the game for San Antonio during that time. Baines is one of those guys that come along with the, the Spurs, and you say, "Who? Who is that?" <laughs> uh, you did the same thing with a guy named Kawhi Leonard mm -hmm. who came around a couple years ago and you said, now, you know, and he, he now fits the system. He now is going to be their next superstar. So, you know, and, and that's, they develop guys. And, and if like Stevens a couple years ago, they brought him in because they needed more scoring. 
but they didn't keep him because they knew he was a cancer in the locker room. They could control him for a half a season, then they got rid of him. <clears throat> and that's what happens. Spurs will not keep anybody that doesn't fit into the family system that they run. Mm -hmm. And I think the Blazers and Neil O'Shea will be the same way. They'll make sure a guy fits into the system. If he doesn't, he'll be out of here because this is a team that gets a lot of, you know, are they ready to beat the Spurs? Yeah, we'll find out in game two. They have the weapons to do it with Aldridge and Lillard and everybody else joining in. But, uh, and Popovich, that's where he's good. He won't be overconfident. He knows what Lillard can do. He knows what Aldridge can do. So he'll have those guys ready to play. We have to be ready to play in game two. Absolutely. This, uh, another question here comes from Jed, and he says, what tempo do the Trail Blazers need to play to be able to control game two? Well, <clears throat> that's where turnovers come in. Blazers aren't afraid to pick up the tempo, and especially against the Spurs, it's a good idea uh, to really increase tempo against them before they get their defense set. Their defense isn't as strong as the Miami Heat in forcing turnovers. The Miami Heat really get into you on the ball, and they're looking for steals. Uh, San Antonio's not that good, so you need to push it up. And get in. Now, that's what San Antonio does so well, what the Blazers need to do. <laughs> they transition and they get right into their transition, their secondary offense, before you get set on defense. That ball is going here, mm -hmm. there. And, and, you know, and all of a sudden now, Parker, they, they're setting their pick and roll up within four seconds over half court. They're into their offense, and you're now scrambling to get into your defense. They just don't give you a time to get set. To you know, if you make changes, okay, it's like Wes. If we turn it over or miss a shot, now Wes is not next to uh, to Parker. He's got to find Parker in transition because it's a mismatch, mm -hmm. and so now he's got to run. And they don't give you time to get set. They know Lillard. Uh, Parker's checking Lillard down here, and now Lillard is standing next to Parker on the other end. And Wes says, that's my man, but I don't have time because they're already into their mm -hmm. offense. So they really, it's a thinking man's game when you play the Spurs. And you got to, you not only have to have energy, Mo Williams and uh, uh, T-Rob, you've got you've to be alert at all times at what they're trying to do against you. And, and, you, and you pick up on that. I think T-Rob at the end of this series will be a much better player because he had to go into, I can't trot back on defense when we miss a shot and look around for my man. I have to know where he is. I have to get back there because if you don't, they find your man with passes and he scores. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's good for people. Mo Williams He's the type of veteran. He's not going to get embarrassed. He'll foul you first. Mm -hmm. If you're going around and whack, <laughs> that's why he leads the NBA and fouls off the bench. Mm -hmm. He's number one because he'll whack you. You can't do that against this San Antonio team. If you put them on the foul line, you know, they don't shoot a lot of fouls. But if you unnecessarily foul them, then they will. So Mo can't foul. He's got to, you know, and, and T-Rob's got to find his man. That's why Will Barton. He can score off the dribble, and it's perfect for going against San Antonio. But in the transition part of it, can he find his man? Can he help out? Can he, uh, when Parker goes into the middle, can he pick up the big guy? When our big guy picks up Parker, can he pick up the big guy's man? Can he do all? He'll be a better player at the end of the series. But we need him a better player in game two. Yes. So it, it seems like the, the the switch from a real physical kind of grinding series uh, with the Rockets to a more cerebral thinking yeah. series with the Spurs and the Trailblazers needed a little bit of time to catch up. And, and that's <laughs> right. They need time. They didn't get it. They had nope. one day. Mm -mm. And, and that's why San Antonio's up one game to zero. Now, if and there's marvelous tapes now that teams watch, individuals watch. They'll be able to see where they made their mistakes. Now, can they correct them in one day for game two? 
That's a big question. You got to hope you just correct the big ones and yeah, the little yeah. ones don't the get Parker, to you. Yeah, yeah, the Parker, controlling yes. Parker. Oh, yes. If you do that, that's half your problem. It, it, it solves problems all the way around. You mm -hmm. know, our Parker's trying to, you know, be the man, then that's not their offense where they, you know, pass the ball. He's controlling it. And if, like, Chris Paul has a pretty good time against Parker because Chris Paul is one of the best defenders in the NBA. Lillard's not there yet. He's getting there on defense, but mm -hmm. he's not there yet. Absolutely. Let's talk about the turnovers last night. Oof. 20. The Trailblazers had 20 turnovers. Granted, it didn't necessarily pan out in points. Um, as It ended up being 12 points, and then the Spurs with 12 turn turnovers for 11 points. But at the same time, I mean, that really just threw a wrench in the engine there when it came to what the Trailblazers were trying to do. How important it is, is it for them to control the Well, ball? against the Spurs... Blazers averaged 88, 88 and a half shots a game. Mm -hmm. They were seven less shots against the Spurs. And this is not the Indiana Pacers that are controlling the number of shots the opposition gets. They want to keep you to around 80 shots a game. If Indiana does that, they're playing their type of defense. If you get 90 shots against the Pacers, it's your type of game. It's the same with San Antonio. You should get 88 to 93 shots, and then you're getting your shots. You're not turning the ball over. Blazers had 82 shots mm -hmm. in the game uh, last night. Uh, that means you're either taking too much time getting into your offense or you're turning it over. In this case, it was both. The Blazers turned it over 20 times against the Spurs, which it didn't lead to a lot of points, but it took away shots yes. from the Blazers. And in doing so, they were disrupting the Blazer offense. It was not only 20 turnovers, it was 38% shooting. Mm -hmm. And that means you weren't getting your normal shots. Well, look at the four, three pointers four for 16. Mm -hmm. And uh, Will Barton, <laughs> he was your three-point shooter. Exactly. They really balanced that out in the garbage time almost there last night. Well, look what uh, Will Barton had three for three. <laughs> yes, The rest exactly. of the Blazers had one three-pointer. <laughs> yes. I mean, this is the second leading team in the NBA, three-pointers. Mm -hmm. The rest of the team had one. Will Barton was three for three. So they're not going to change anything nope. at San Antonio. They did what they wanted mm -hmm. to do. They took away the three-point shot, and they held... Aldridge in the first half. Mm -hmm. I like that you brought up Will Barton there because there's actually a couple questions. One front comes from Kareen and the other one comes from Mike and Ikes. And he, uh, they say, why isn't Will getting more serious minutes since he's been excellent? And also, he looked really confident last night in garbage time. Do you think that could earn him a spot in the rotation? Could he, he be earned, a guy? He earned minutes mm -hmm. by what he did. When you're in the playoffs, there's a reason you really shorten your rotation. Yep. Uh, coaches don't trust their ninth, 10th, and 11th man. You use them in the regular season because if you don't, your starters will die by the time the playoffs come. They just have no, nothing left in their legs. And that's why the Spurs, their starters average less minutes than any team in the NBA. Under 30 minutes a game. We talked about that the other night. Yep. And their legs, they're old legs, but they're not tired old yeah. legs. You know, they haven't played that many <laughs> minutes. So, like last night, all we have to, Tim, Tim Duncan, how many minutes do you think he played? Oh, I didn't even look. 24. Whoa. He played <laughs> half a game. He played half a game. So his uh, old legs are not tired. Right. So going Splitter, into game two. played 29. Played yeah. under 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. So, uh, uh, Danny Green, 15 minutes. Now, Parker, 36 minutes. So he, he had to, because he's controlling the game. Mm -hmm. So his legs probably won't be as fresh for game two. Uh, Kawhi Leonard played 33 minutes. If you look at the Blazers, LaMarcus, how many minutes? Probably close to, a, well, not the last quarter, so 38, 36? 41 minutes oh, without playing at the end of the game. Yeah. It would have been 44. So uh, Nicholas, wow. 36. Mm -hmm. uh, Wesley, 35. Mm -hmm. Lillard, 37. And that's without playing at the end of the game. So they're all probably 40-minute guys. They've reduced their roster because they don't trust guys coming in 9, 10, 11. And you shorten. You play more minutes in the playoffs, no doubt about it. 
San Antonio didn't have to. Mm -mm. See, so that's a plus again for them. When they get laid into the series, they're old, but are they tired? And the Blazers have played a whole season. Their starters played more minutes than any other team in the NBA. So although they're young, boy, that an NBA season takes a lot out of you. So, you know, you're looking at that. You're, you're at the same time, you're making some changes on how to control Parker. So a guy like Will Barton, the question was, Will, yes. You know, as long as he's in there and he's got energy and he's not hurting you and he's going to help you maybe on offense like he did last night, you got to take a chance with him and uh, see how he does. You do indeed. All right, let's round out this one with what you think the biggest adjustments are that the Trailblazers are going to make going into game two to have some better success. I think they're going to have to make a big decision on what they want to do with Parker. It's either going to be leave Lillard on them and change how their big men play the pick and roll, or it's going to be start Wesley on them and you know, have your normal defense where you're backing up and let Wesley take the brunt of foul trouble, mm -hmm. the, the whole work. So that'll be the key change, how you play Parker. It's either Wes and let Wes get real physical with him, and that could be because, you know, in game two, Blazers were too nice to this team. Everybody says they're, hey, hate the Spurs as much as you hate the Rockets. You know, they, I've always hated the Spurs, so I have no trouble. <laughs> if I were there, I have no trouble. Popovich, I always talk about his whining. I get them to hate us <laughs> by saying things about them. You know, mix it up a little bit with them. Right now, it's lovey-dovey. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Nick loves his French, the two Diao and the other Frenchman, Parker. Parker. They, you know, it's a love fest. Hey, this is the playoffs round two. Don't just be satisfied. We made round two, which was a great accomplishment for this Blazer team. But don't be satisfied with that. Get out there and, and knock somebody down. Wes should knock Parker down. Get the fans. Uh-oh. The Blazers are out of their shell now. There's, they're taking no prisoners. Knock him down early in the game. and So that may be the strategy, or it may be send the big guy up and play Lillard on him and change there. So that, to me, is the big thing. And don't turn the ball over. Yep. The other thing is you can't be nervous. Forget about being nervous. You've won 58 games. You're one of the elite teams in the West. Go out and, and attack them. Forget about the turnovers and just go play basketball absolutely thanks so much for joining us today rice you guys we are going to be back doing another live ask rice on friday that is of course after tomorrow's game two and tomorrow we'll have the court report playoffs edition live at 4 30 joined by orlando and mike barrett we get the other half of, yes, uh, yeah. of your uh, dream team there so thanks again so much we, we will see you guys tomorrow and friday